Hey everyone, it's Sion, the Unexpected Maker. In this video, I'm going to do some final modifications to my T962A reflow oven. And fingers crossed, it'll be the only things I need to do to get a perfect reflow out of it. Let's find out. I'm not going to bore you all with the swapping of the fan, but this was the fan that I took out. And this is the new one I put in. And I'm not quite sure if it should be pushing or pulling. I'm not sure how effective it's going to be either way. This air vent's on the side of the cover, as you can see, on both sides. So I don't know if pulling air in and circulating it is the right way to go, or pulling air out from the fan and letting air come in from the vents. The fan that was in there was blowing in across the boards, and it was loud, super loud. So what I've done for now is I have used these wire joiners to join them together. That way I can experiment with flipping them around before I permanently solder the cables together. And what I did is I spliced the two because the actual cable from the previous fan is corked permanently onto the board and I didn't want to pull that apart, scrape it all off, potentially damage the board or the JST connector. So I just spliced the wires. So that's the fan in. This is super quiet compared to the other one. You remember the humming that was in the previous video? Let's just get the lid back on for now. I don't like having this all exposed. I'll leave the front open for now, but I'm about to turn this on and have a listen. Can you hear that? I can't hear anything. The tiniest little sound. That is just awesome. And it's definitely spinning. This is about 30 decibels quieter than the previous fan. Very happy with that change. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm filming this backwards on my workbench because I need access to my iron and obviously the camera and lighting for you to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to attempt to attach this little Maxim one wire temperature sensor and it's going to be a little bit tricky. I need to add a 4.7K resistor across these two pads just here. And there are 0805 pads, but I don't have an 0805 4.7. I've got a 4.3 and a 5.1, but I do have a 4.7 in 0603. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get an 0603 across those two pads. It's going to be a little bit difficult. My 3D printer's going in the background, sorry about the noise. So I'm going to first just tin a pad, if I can. I really don't know how I'm going to do this, because there are some caps and transistors in the way. And of course, sticking 0603 onto an 0805 pad is not the easiest of things to do, under the best of circumstances. But I'm at 45 degree angle, working kind of backwards. Let's just get one out. Hope I don't lose it. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. If not, I apologise. Hopefully I won't melt anything. I really don't know if I got that on well enough. Okay, it's a little bit low. Let's see if I can just reposition it. And then once this is on, I need to connect a wire to it. That's a bit better. That in itself is going to be challenging. Let's see if I can get some solder on the other pad without making it fall off. Okay, and get some more on here. Okay, that looks like it's on. So what I'm basically doing is, one of those pads is the 3 volt line. So this resistor is going to be used as a pull up on this temperature sensor. The temperature sensor has to sit around here. Let's get this wire out of the way if I can. Around here and I need to scratch off some of this surface because there's ground plane under there. So I want both the positive and the negative pins, which is the outside pins, to be touching ground. And the center pin is going to be connected to the side of that resistor. So what I need to do firstly is bend these gently, just two of them, the outside ones, bend them around like this without snapping them off, because snapping them off would be bad. I did buy two of these sensors, just in case. Okay, they're going to be connected to ground somewhere in here, somehow. This one, I need to connect a wire to it, and then connect it to over there. So I need to get some wire. Probably use some solid core, would be the easiest. I don't know how much I need. Here's some blue. Well, oh, that's stacks. That's okay. Let's just get one end connected, and I've got some heat shrink that I can put on it just to protect that pin. I wonder if I can put this here so you can see what I'm doing. It's a possibility, but I might not be able to. Let's see the cables in the way. Careful not to squish it too much. It's not too bad, I don't think. 
I'm sorry you can't really see this, it's a bit hard to focus the camera on it. I'm just going to put the heat shrink on. See if I can get the heat shrink in and over. Cool. Could have used a much shorter length, but oh well. Let me get the other side of it. Excellent. Let that cool down. I'm going to need to scrape off some of the solder mask on this spot here. I, mean, I wish there was another place to do it, but we need the actual sensor to be around here to measure the temperature here. Okay. Should probably check that that is correct continuity wise. Another way. Okay, so which one would be ground? Okay, that looks like the ground on the cap. Excellent. Okay, so we've got it grounded. How am I going to attach that? So, do I want to bend the legs a bit? Will that be enough just to hold it there? Let's get this over. See if we can get our measurement right first for the length of the wire. Might cut that about there. So, will that fit? That there goes to there. Looks pretty good. It's a bit sticking out a lot, but that's okay, I think. So, I think what I might do is solder the two legs together. Okay. Okay, I can smell a lot of burning plastic, which isn't good. I don't know what that is though. Let me grab some flux. Maybe I need to scrape up some more. That's a lot of flux. Let me see if I can get some solder on this copper. Okay, that kind of worked. Now let's see if we can get this back on. Ooh, that is quite hot. Sorry if that wire's in the way, but you know. Ooh, got it. Okay, now, need to get this wire onto this resistor without burning my fingers and without knocking the resistor off. Okay, I think I got it. Wow. Of course, I won't know until I boot the thing up. Now, the question is, is this wire going to be sitting too high for the insulation? I might try to bend this wire over now if I can without... Uh, no, pulled it off. Okay, so I'm going to try to do that again. Get the wire bent over like that. I think that'll be better. And let's get a bit more solder on the iron tip. Try that again. Okay. I'm much more comfortable with that, I think. Okay, let's put it back together again and see if this one wire temperature sensor starts working better for the cold compensation. Let me tell you, getting a good angle to video this is not easy. Okay, my DMM says 52 degrees, 43 here. Hopefully you can see everything on screen. Let's go. So the top set value is what it's supposed to be on. ACT is actual, what it thinks it's on. And you can see the comparison now. So the two indicators we're looking for are, one, how close actual and the DMM is, but more importantly, how high the DMM gets. So my previous attempt on the last video, the DMM didn't really get above 219 degrees, or 218 degrees, which is not hot enough to reflow the boards. And I had to get this to 265 to get it that hot. Let's see if we can get the DMM, which is at tray level, to reach above 230 degrees. Okay, we're at 210 degrees and we're not at the top of the profile yet. Okay, we're higher on the DMM now than we've ever been on a reflow and we're still not at the top of the graph. Okay, we're above 230. 235 is our sweet spot for reflowing. And we're above 235. So we seem to be holding around 240 at the top of the graph, which is only five or six degrees out from what it says on the oven. And we're gonna go cool down. Excellent. I think we have a working profile and a working oven. I guess we'll find out when I get my new tiny Pico boards. Okay, one last mod I wanted to show you that I've done, and this is courtesy of Greg Devil, and he's done this as well, and that is, he added some screws and nuts to his tray to be able to elevate. 
instead of using PCBs or just putting the PCB you want to reflow directly onto the tray, which is going to wick a lot of heat away, he just did something like this. So I can now place a tiny pico board on here using four of them, or I can place a bigger board or potentially get two on here. But this does two things. It obviously elevates my board closer to the elements and closer to the thermocouples that are inside, so more accurate location for the reflow and also, yeah, takes it off the tray. So that was a clever idea. Thanks, Greg. And there you have it, a working reflow oven. I didn't waste my money after all. Yes. Hopefully you'll see some shiny, tiny picos coming out of here very soon. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe and click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. If you're already a sub, thank you so much. To all my awesome patrons, you're fantastic. And I will catch you all next time. Bye.